A jet plane accelerates on a runway from rest at 6.1 meters per second squared. After 9 seconds, find its, and in question A, we must find the distance traveled. Okay, so you can see here the first part, they ask us to choose which is the correct motion formula to use. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually first start with the stock taking. I'm first going to see, well, what information have I been given so that I can decide which formula to use. Well, um, let's see. A jet plane accelerates. Okay, so we have acceleration. Do we know what is the acceleration? Yes, it, they give it to us as 6.1 meters per second squared. So 6.1 meters per second squared. Okay, um, then what else do they tell us? Accelerates on a runway from rest. Okay, so in other words, it was actually at rest, which means its initial velocity used to be 0 meters per second. Cool, so we have acceleration and we have velocity, initial velocity. After 9 seconds, find its distance traveled. So after 9 seconds means we have delta T as 9 and we have to use an equation that contains delta X because we need to do the distance traveled. So this is what we're trying to find. So let's see which equation has A, VI, delta T and X. Okay, there we have A, VI doesn't have delta x okay so not going to be that one that one has delta x this one doesn't have delta x this one has delta x it has vi it has future velocity which we don't have okay this one has delta x this one has time it has vi and it has acceleration so this must be the correct formula that we are going to have to use okay so we know the formula now we can do the stock taking part this is the average acceleration. We don't know the average acceleration. We know the initial velocity. Now, very important, let's just read our question. Fill in all the values in standard metric units. Okay, Leave out the units and leave unknown values blank. So we don't know this one. We're going to leave it blank. The initial velocity we do know is 0 meters per second. Future velocity we do not know. The um, delta x is what we're trying to calculate, so we're not going to put that one in. Delta t we know is 9 seconds. And acceleration, we were given that as 6.1 meters per second. Now what did they mean by standard metric units? That means we're working in meters, in seconds, and not in kilometers and hours. Although all of us, our information has been given as meters per second. So now in the substituting step, let's go and substitute. So in, there's our formula. We're going to use it just like that. They also tell us to ignore deltas and subscripts in this step, but not in written work. So when you write this, please write your deltas. But here you can just type it as x is equal to, since we know our formula, let me first write it out here. Okay, We know our formula as delta x is equal to the initial velocity times time plus half acceleration times delta t. Okay, now with that in mind, we have initial velocity is 0, delta t is 9, plus a half of 6.1 times 9. Okay, and when we solve that, let's go solve it using our calculator. So we have 9 times 0, which will obviously just be 0, plus a half, which is 1 over 2, times 6.1 times 9. And I see I've neglected my square here. It must be a 9 squared. 9 squared gives us 247.05. Okay, that is our final answer. Okay, so all we're going to do here is this is the substitution step. Very important to put in all of the values here. We have 0 times 9 plus a half times 6.1 times 9 squared. And let's just always remember to preview just so that you can make sure you have it correct. That looks like what we have here, so I'm happy. Okay, now let's solve it for the answer. So x must be equal to, okay, and we already calculated 
0.05. Don't forget your unit meters and there we go. Our preview looks perfect.